Hello and welcome to the Loop with Sloop. I'm your host, Burham Sloop, and today is going to be another episode in my learning web series. What we're doing today is we are learning how to position, excuse me, position our divs using our margins and borders. Uh, this is something that really I think is going to be very important for you, and um, we're going to be breaking it down into several levels. The first, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how margins and paddings work on a conceptual level. Uh, in order to do that, I'm just going to kind of throw up a div on the screen here. You can see here this box. All right, so what padding is, is padding is on the inside of these uh, of the box here. You can see I've kind of highlighted here. What we do is we can influence and manipulate how far of a padding we want from the border of our div. Now the opposite is true of margins. Margins allow us to be able to uh, say how far we want our div border away from other objects outside of the div. It kind of helps to be able to do that because we're going to be manipulating that. Now the same thing is not only just applied to divs, it's also applied to everything. Divs are just one single part of it. We also see that margins and paddings are applied to text. Margin and padding are applied to images. They're applied to links. They're applied to everything. Um, and HTML, in the way that it handles it, will automatically put in um, will automatically put in some of these um, some some of these margins and headings as a kind of default value. Uh, so that's moving on to our second little main part. Is what we're going to do is we're going to talk about these sort of automatic. Uh, margins and paddings. They will become tremendously annoying as you get to be uh, more and more involved in the uh, production of actual content on the web because very often you might not necessarily be sure where extra space is coming from but it's always there. So you always want to be aware that it is there. I'm going to give you a little demonstration of this. Now let's say that I want to have a heading on the top of my page. Um, so I'm just going to call it heading. All right. So and you know blah blah blah. And I'm going to put some stuff underneath it as well. I'm going to do P here. And we'll put some text under there. All right. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to open this up. Whoops. I'm going to open this up in my actual Firefox browser. Now take a look at what this has done. Now th these borders you can ignore. I I've intentionally put those in so we can see where the edges of the divs are. But um, we'll talk about that in just a sec. Look at this heading. Tell me, why is this heading so far down? You can see that it's, there's the space here. I didn't tell it to put space here. Well, that's the demonstration of the margin here. We can see that the margin is there. The same thing is true of padding. Notice when I highlight this text, it doesn't go directly up to the edge of the text. No, there's about 5, 10 pixels right there in which we see a space in between the heading, or in between the edge of the heading. This is also a part of the automatic text padding. Um, part of on this div as well, you can see there's a border here. There is automatic there is an automatic margin that is being placed right there that's putting it off from the edge. Because otherwise it would be placed up right against the very edge of the corner of the browser and it's simply not there. This is a bit of a demonstration. You could say the same thing is true here of this P tag. It's true of all of the objects that you're going to be putting on there. There's an automatic default margin and padding value that's put in there. Now, let's say that I want to get rid of that. Well, what we do is pretty darn simple. Uh, we can go in here, and you can see my style here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in h1 in my CSS uh, so that we can actually influence that h1 tag. And then I'm just going to put padding, and you know you put margin. And if I want to influence them, I just put the number after. So I want to put zero pixels to get rid of that. And zero pixels. All right. Now when I save this, um, the heading itself will no longer have those. Um, will no longer have the uh, thing. And you can see how it's bumped right up against there. You can see that it's it's gotten rid of that extra space that was up there. You can see that's that's how we influence that sort of stuff. Now, um, when we want to change the padding and heading, we can obviously do that with everything. We can make this, you know, 200 pixels if we want, and we, that same effect will be there. Whoops, uh, that same effect will be there, um, and we'll see it very prevalently. So we'll pop over here, give a little bit of demonstration. You can see, boom, it's popped all the way over here. Well, let's give another hypothetical scenario. Let's say that I want to influence the height padding, but not have the left padding gone quite so far over because I mean that that could be irritating uh, based on where we want to place it 
Well, the same thing is true for both margins and paddings, is that um, we, affect, we affect it counterclockwise. We can add four different numbers in. We can have the top, which is going to be the first one, the right side, the bottom, and then the left side. That same thing, as I said, is true of margin. You have 0, 0, 0, 0. Now all of these are zeroed out. If I have a single number, it'll affect all four sides in the same time. If I want to just affect, say, the top, I can just do this and put 200 pixels here, and that will, that will increase the padding size by 200 pixels just in the vertical position. So pop over here, we refresh it, and you can see now we're only affecting this one thing right there. This is the same, going to be the same for every single thing. If it's a div, if it's a, if it's a heading, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can do the same exact sort of uh, influencing you would do here. So I'm going to get rid of this heading here, and we're just going to be positioning our divs now and using that padding and heading to kind of get a bit of a, a bit of an understanding here. All right, so I'm going to delete that content there. And I'm going to, ask, let's say that I'm going to make my main, my main box uh, a certain height and width. So I'm going to get in here. I want my, actually, no, I'm going to put the, I'm going to make it 800 pixels across, and I'm going to let the height adjust dynamically. Um, this is kind of a, a, a thing that HTML does. If you have content inside of it, it will automatically adjust unless I specifically tell it a specific height. And since my main content, I don't want to specify a specific height. I'm just going to leave that blank on there, and I'm just going to have the width there. So for this top content, I'm just going to put a width of, I don't know, 200 pixels and a height of... 200 pixels again. And I think I'll do the same thing with the bottom content here. Let me pop down here and we'll paste that in. All right, boom, boom, boom. All right, so we're going to save it and let's take a look at what that looks like if we are to refresh it over here. You can see I have one uh, box here. That's that top content. Here's the bottom content. You can see the height has been adjusted dynamically. Now I have 800, um, 800 wide box here for my main content. Um, so I'm going to jump over here. And let's say that I want to put my content a bit, you know, I want to have it 20 pixels from the left side and 20 pixels from the top side for both of these boxes and 20 pixels from the right side on all these different sides. Well, if I want to affect all of the sides, I just do the same thing that we talked about in just a second ago. I put the margin to be, you know, 20 pixels. And I'm going to zero out the padding because I don't really need padding right now. I want the content, if I, for, with zero padding the content, let's say I have text, it'll go right up there, and we'll illustrate that in just a sec. All right, so I've got to, whoops, I've got to save it. And then I'll go over here, and then I'm going to refresh it, and you can see how this is affected. Now we can do the same exact thing for the top content as well. And that will allow us to have our goal. Go over here, and whoops, what did I do? Did I screw it up? Oh. Of course, you obviously need a semicolon at the end. Obey syntax. I'm not always the best at that, but do as I say, not as I do. Um, but yeah, you can see here, we've got 20 pixels on the top here. That's the margin that we put, and 20 pixels on the bottom here. That's the kind of uh, the spacing that we're doing here. Now, the padding is going to be zero. So let's say I have some text inside of this. Um, I'm just going to put you know, a little bit of text. All right, so there's some example text. Uh, just random gibberish. All right, I can pop over here if I've saved it, and yeah, it, it'll if it's a single word. Obviously, yeah, that's something I should actually pay attention to. All right, so let's say these are all words, and I've made a beautiful, very expose awesomeness for my page, and I have to save it as well. All right, so there we go. Whoa, whoa, refresh. There we go. All right, you can see how this this text has bumped down and it's going right up to the edge here. That's because the padding is zero. Uh, when the padding is zero, it's not going to um, it's, it's not going to have any extra space on the middle. Now padding on the divs will influence the middle if I increase that uh, to 20 pixels. Um, um, and I can also, you know, for the padding, as I said before, I, can, I could individually affect them. Uh, if I wanted to do the top, bottom, side, but I'm just going to leave them all the same and I want them all 20 pixels from the side so that way I can uh, influence it that way. And you can see here the padding has then uh, affected this text now. It's pretty straightforward, pretty standard stuff. Um, but it doesn't always 
work for what we want to do. Sometimes we want the computer to automatically adjust things, uh, specifically in terms of centering. Now we notice that this main content div here is off to the left side. That's default, just standard left to right is how our divs are placed. But let's say I want my main content in the middle. Like if we go to a normal website, like YouTube for instance, the websites are always in the middle of the, wind of the window. Well, if we want to do that, it's pretty darn simple to do. Um, so I'm going to jump over here and show us how to do that. So we get in the main content div, which is, yeah, it's, it's the main div that holds all of our stuff. If we want to, say, influence it so that it is exactly in the center, the way we do that is we just type in the margin. I Let's say I want 10 pixels on the top, so I'm just going to type in 10 pixels for top. But then on the left side, I want it to be automatically adjusting. I don't know how many pixels there. So what I do is I press, I just type in the word auto. And the computer understands that that is going to automatically center it to the left. And let's say on the bottom, I want another 10 pixels on the bottom. And I want to then automatically adjust the other side as well. Oops. All right, so I'm going to save this. I'm going to go over here and then refresh this. And you can see it has gone right to the center. That's exactly what I want. There are 10 pixels on the top, 10 pixels on the bottom, and automatically adjusting sides. This is perfect for what I want. Um, the same thing is true of these inner content divs as well. I can uh, you know, have 20 pixels there, and then I'll put the auto, 20 pixels, and then auto, and save that, and refresh this, and it's jumped over to the center. And that's going to apply to anything that you want to do. If I wanted to do that with individual words or headings or something, that same exact principle applies to all of those things. Uh, so hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. I think that's where we're going to end it off here. Uh, in the next episode, we'll learn how to float things so that I could, let's say, have this box right here and this box be right here, and so that where they're horizontal to each other. Uh, it's pretty easy to do, but uh, we'll, we'll jump in and we'll learn how to do that in the next episode. So hopefully I've helped you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.